Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 3. Today is episode number 125. If you want to help support the channel, then leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe, and feel free to check out the other videos in the Forza Mega Series. Now let's get into the content. This video was streamed live on Twitch. Come watch us live with the link in the description. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation or PC, then check out Eniba in the description down below. All right, so we are here now not for the Asian Open. We're here for the Class R3 World Tour. We're going to be taking the TVR Speed 12 for this one. Cerberus Speed 12. Starting off with Road America, Sedona, Camino Via de Montserrat, Le Mans circuit, Twin Ring, and then New York. Let's get going. Yeah, I mean, that is a great comparison, though. Gran Turismo is the Dark Souls of racing games. It's fucking brilliant. All right, here we go. TVR, let's go. Fuck me, this thing's quick. At least we got cornering ability as well. It's such a machine. Let's have a listen to it without any music. That is one hell of an engine. Like, again, I give TVR props for this, but I just think that their actual design, I think they literally just look at a pile of sick and they're like, oh, look, there's a car shape. We'll make that. Like, it wouldn't surprise me if they just go, yeah, brush that away. There you go. It's just a pile of vomit. I mean, why have they got these, like, little spots on the back of the car and fucking bug-eyed headlights and shit? Oh yeah, when we get the McLaren F1 GT stream, like, I'm announcing we're driving the McLaren F1 GT in the Discord, so everyone knows that you have to join that stream. Because we listened to that in uh, Motorsport 2, and oh my god, that was so good. Such a good engine noise. Bang, bang. Burderderderm. Burderderderm. I do like the balance that we have in vehicles now. I think when we started this sort of segment and doing like two episodes per championship, this sort of middle section with six events, starting off with like really slow and then going into race cars and then slow again. It's really bad how it's structured if you're going to do it in order. But then once you get to later bits, it does feel very, very fun. Oof. Bollocks. I'll be 100% honest, Elden Ring, the only way, reason I won't play it is because it's... People keep comparing it to, like, a Souls game. And I don't like Dark Souls. I don't like that style of game because there's no difficulty option. There's no accessibility. It is there just for the people that you know, enjoy pain, I guess.
a lot of people have been making, like, even inspired by Dark Souls is still. I'm just not a fan. Like, I like games that have difficulty options because I want to play it and just enjoy the game. I don't go to people and be like, oh, you've only completed the game on easy. Ugh. Like, I... Difficulty... Doesn't matter. Like, you could play it on the easiest difficulty, you could play it on the hardest difficulty. No. I've never... I've tried Dark Souls once and I hated it. Because of its how difficult it is. And like, I'll be honest, I like I do not care if someone tells me like, oh, I've completed this game on the hardest difficulty. I'm like, yeah, I don't care if you complete it on the hardest difficulty. Like that part of it, I d do not give a shit about. Your achievement of completing it on the hardest difficulty means little to nothing to me. Because... It's very much a brag, more than anything. Most people, when they're like, oh, I've completed this on the hardest difficulty. Normally, they're there to brag. Some people aren't there to brag, and I mean, fair enough. But it, it is a very braggy way of doing it. Like, if someone says, oh yeah, I've completed... Gran Turismo, or I've completed um, God of War Ragnarok. Oh, good on you. What did you think of it? You know, I'm more more interested in someone saying, oh, I've just completed the game. You know, I don't care what their difficulty was, whether they did it on Ultra. Like, it really doesn't bother me. But for some people, it's like a challenge to try and complete a game on a harder difficulty than others. And that, again, is wrong. You know. Yeah. I mean, some... I would love to give Dark Souls a try because a lot of people do say it's a good game. The people who can actually play it. They say it's a good game, and I look at those recommendations, I'm like, I wish I could play it, but there's no difficulty. I can't go into a Dark Souls game and just, you know, make it so that I one-hit people or whatever, just have fun. I can't do that. I'm playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey on easy at the moment. Just because I really enjoy the game. I'm still dying in it. Sometimes. When I bite off more than I can chew. But, you know. I'm still enjoying it on easy. I think I should stop ranting about difficulties in games. <laughs> Yeah. Like. You can see how passionate I am about, like, games having difficulties, though. Dark Souls games are more difficult on the difficult side. Almost there with Sekiro, Bloodborne, and Naya. I think that's how you say it. Do you know what? One of the games that I've really wanted to play was Sekiro. Because it was such a hyped up game. Everyone was like, it's so good. And it looked awesome. But it was one of those sort of Dark Souls kind of games. Where it was difficult. And I'm just like, oh. Cool, I'm not playing that then. Lovely. And it is a shame because... The easiest way... For these developers to make more money would be to add a difficulty slider. Because the people who play it on the ultra difficulty and want the Dark Souls experience will obviously pick the hardest difficulty. But those that want to play it will always pick the easiest one. 
Like, it's an obvious thing. It's an obvious solution to a problem that a lot of gamers have, but the people who play the games and who make the games are too blindsided to see that. Yeah. I mean, fair enough. If you if you play Sekiro and you can get along with it, then in, enjoy it by all means. Have fun. I just won't be playing it cause, for the sole reason that it is difficult. More difficult than it should be. Bang, bang. Do, 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 do. Tits. Do 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 do. Yeah, I suppose I might have a look at Demon Souls, but I don't really feel like spend like I don't know how much is Demon Souls on disc. I might be able to get a disc copy and use the PlayStation that's downstairs. I just don't want to spend the ridiculous price that Sony do on their stores for their first party stuff. For a game that I may not like. Oh, fair enough. I might be able to install it downstairs anyways, then. <laughs> Tired. Ah, oh, you penis. Penis. A penis. My name's Penis. <laughs> My new name's Penis. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. I'm actually going to change it to Discord right now. <laughs> I'm going to become Lord Penis. I swear to God, if Mariah Carey is number one. <laughs> That's fucking amazing. I think this video actually might be on the 25th. I'm not 100% sure, but I think this video lines up with the 25th of December. Which is kind of funny as well. But yeah, apparently there is actual, like, fucking gambling. Like, people can place bets on what the fucking Christmas number one is. It's fucking terrible. Sidemen's odds are apparently 4 to 1. So if you bet on the Sidemen getting the Christmas number one, uh, it will cost you one day Ariana Grande will be number one. Oh, please don't fucking say that. I don't want anyone to be number one. Most importantly, though, I want Lad Baby to not get number one again because they've got number one like four years in a row and it's just all about fucking sausage rolls. We built this city on sausage rolls. 
I don't even know the other ones. It's just fucking sausage rolls. This year they'll do jingle bells, but it's sausage rolls. Yeah, I mean... The problem I have with Christmas, personally, is Christmas is very much overhyped. Like, we'll have Christmas shit for two, like, two months, and then by the time Christmas comes round, you enjoy Christmas, but you're fed up with it at the same time. Like, I wouldn't mind if they didn't advertise Christmas songs and Christmas stuff so much until two weeks before Christmas. Sausage rolls, sausage rolls, sausages all the way. <laughs> That's such a good one. Like, I'm barely in the Christmas spirit. And I deliberately try to just not get into the Christmas spirit. Like, I have a Christmas tree here. So I don't look like a fucking alien or a fucking Scrooge or whatnot. But, like, I don't really celebrate Christmas until... Or want to discuss Christmas or even think about being festive until like a week before Christmas Day at the most like at that point do I then start thinking oh it's getting Christmassy and then I enjoy Christmas you know but yeah Xbox has announced um, that games are going to be now 70 quid on their platform, which a lot of Xbox fan accounts are like, oh, we don't have anything on PlayStation anymore. Like, to be honest, I think Americans should just shut up anyways about the price increase because let's be honest, Americans have had their games cheaper for a while. They pay less on a video game than we do in the UK, so quit your whining. Uh, and as for, like, video games, they are, I mean, you spend, the people that complain about how video games are going up to 70 quid are the same morons that paid 50 quid for a video game on the Xbox 360 that literally lasted 12 hours in their story, and that was, like, a fairly short game. We're seeing games that are being sold that have, like, you know, like, Assassin's Creed. My copy of Assassin's Creed that I bought, okay, yeah, I bought it on sale, but that costs £90 with the Gold Edition, but there is at least getting close to 100 hours of content in that. It's a fucking huge game. You look at Assassin's Creed from 10 years ago, there was nowhere near that much content. And yet people would still pay 50 quid for that. Yeah, I suppose. I think companies like EA that do re-release games, I think they'd. it would be better in the public interest if they made... Um... If they made a game called EA Sports, um, I, I really want them to do it for WRC and test it out, where they make WRC, EA Sports WRC, and they add, like, it's a free application, you just download the app um, to your PC and whatnot, or your... PlayStation, whatever. And then you can download like a demo with that app so you can try something out, see if you like the game. But for those people that want like, you know, WRC 23, here, give us £30, you'll have the first season, uh, you'll have the 2023 season of WRC. We'll give you all the rallies in the 2023 season. 
and all the cars. We'll give you some old cars as a bonus as well. There you go, that's 2023, under the WRC app, right? 2024 comes around, instead of making another game, here. We're now going to offer another DLC, which has the 2024 season, right? Here, give us 30 quid. There you go, you can now have access to the 2024 season of WRC. We'll add all the 2024 cars to go along with your 2023 cars. And you've also got a couple more old cars. There you go. And they keep doing that until they need like an actual generational upgrade. So for example, in three or four years time, they upgrade the Ego engine for Codemasters. Then make a new app and then start again, you know. Because that way, I think, um, is it Pro Evolution Soccer, PES? I think they do a similar thing where you just get, like, you basically buy the game and then you get season upgrades, but they class as, like, separate game titles. But, like, you still, if you have it, you don't have to pay a full price just to upgrade to the next season. And I think as well, if EA did something like that, um, they could actually get away with doing less sales. Like, you look at EA, like, FIFA 23 has been out for, what, two months? And it's already, the highest it's gone on sale was 40% off. Exactly, Zeno. That would be a great idea for Formula 1. And, like, it's just DLC content that they add. Because that way, if they do that as well, they could potentially get all these features in much sooner into a game that's already there. We could see... Oh, shit. We could see the Formula 1 games actually bring out the next season much earlier on. Because of the fact they don't have to make all this extra stuff, they just have to do a DLC patch. You know. And, like, even if they didn't want to do it that way, like, a free app, they could quite easily sell, like, the 22 game at full price and then just add the seasons on afterwards. So, if you wanted to play WRC, you could buy the 22 season or the 23 season or whatnot. You buy the 23 season of WRC... And then you add the seasons you want to. So if you want to play the current season, they do a bundle with WRC, which comes with the 2023 season, and the current version, you know. And you can buy whatever seasons you want to drive. And the argument of, well, maybe all these license holders don't want them selling older stuff but you look they're still selling old FIFAs like I think it would be a great way for EA to do it they then look less like greedy money whores and it actually makes like the user experience a lot more enjoyable because it's all in one place like, if I could just sit, hit quick play, and I've got all the 20, like, I pick what year I want to play from, it's all there in one app. And I don't understand why more game developers don't do it. Because there's no excuse to not do it. When you think about it. Because even if it's different game engines, the game engines don't have to load much to load menus and stuff like that. Like, even Battlefield did it. And sure, Battlefield was slightly different. You had these menus you could go in and then you'd load the game, but...
Yeah, exactly. And the fact is, if there's a problem with the 22 game... Oh shit, I pressed the wrong button. If there's a problem with a later game, or like an earlier game, like... Oh, we found a bug in the 2023 season. Well, that bug just gets patched, and it's patched for like future games and everything like that. Because all the problems that rise with these games, yes, they affect all of the games, because they're all in one thing. But at the same time, when they get fixed, they're fixed for all of the games. So, less development, like, it, it just seems like a no-brainer. And I, I know money is behind a lot of decisions at these companies, but surely having less development time on an app because everything's done it under one umbrella rather than running like maintenance on three versions of FIFA surely that's got to save them a bit of money that they would get more profit anyways just makes no sense a lot of these game companies I think they just they're just like Stupid. I'll be honest, there's no other way to put it. Like, games like Need for Speed, it wouldn't work for. You can't really have one. But these ones where they're just like slight changes from generation to generation, they could quite easily make one application and just. You know, add the next season as DLC. But executive decisions are making it more painful both for the companies and for the users. When you think an idea like that one would make it easier both for gamers, for developers, and for the business itself, it's a no-brainer. But clearly execs at these businesses and these companies have less than no brain. They have negative brain. They have brains that are deliberately there to make stupid decisions. Rah, 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 rah. All right. I don't know. I have to Google that one. Oh, they can really shower. Woo! Ah, the Ferrari's fucked off. <laughs> Ferrari blew up. Yeah, I don't know about the origin story of um, Criterion. But I know that... Um, What is it? Codemasters Cheshire, which used to be Evolution Studios, is now merged with Criterion. So that team, although it's not the entire team, because obviously stuff trickles down and splits up and changes and whatnot. But the basics of what started out as Evolution Studios has ended up with EA in Criterion. They basically got merged together. Which I mean fair enough, because Codemasters Cheshire did pretty much nothing. Other than Onrush. Do you know, it sucks that Onrush isn't actually on PC. Like, I don't understand why it's not on PC. It totally should have been on PC.
But as much as I complain about, like, EA's, how they do, like, making a game every year and whatnot, I think when they get the WRC license, I will buy the WRC game every year. Because I'm a sucker for it. And I really, really like rallying. I mean, starting next year, I'm watching WRC Plus, like, from the start of the season. I'm going to do it as, like, a monthly thing, because I don't think I'd be able to go through January and just straight up, like, pay £100, because I don't have that money. But I'll be watching WRC Plus every for every rally next year. I'm very excited for next year's rallying. Please stand up. I repeat, will the real Sim Shady please stand up? We're gonna have a problem here. I didn't know Wolfie. I didn't. Um, there obviously isn't any near me, so... Nothing, you idiots. Dr. Dory's dead. He's locked in my basement. Chicka, 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 Sim Shady. I'm sick of him. Make stop singing because Eminem's lyrics will get him cancelled in today's world. <laughs> Do you know what? If people cancel stuff, like cancel people over stuff that happened years ago, it's just stupid. Discovery Channel, don't they? <laughs> we don't have the Discovery Channel anymore. <laughs> That's kind of the funny thing. Like, this song basically became irrelevant 10 years ago because nobody used Discovery Channel for that. I'm Sim Shady, yes, I'm the real Shady. All you other Sim Shadies are just imitating. I want the real Sim Shady. Please stand up. Please stand up. Please stand up. The real shady, are your other sim shadies are just imitating. So want the real sim shady, please stand up, please stand up, please stand up. Meow, 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 meow. What? My name is who? My name is. Hi, kids. Do you like violins? Want to see me stick nine-inch nails through each one of my eyelids? Such a weird fucking, a weird fucking song. Hee <laughs> Ah. I'm Sim Shady, yes I'm the real Shady, all you other Sim Shadies are just imitating, so I want the real Sim Shady, please stand up. So I, obviously, because of like games like Midnight Club and Need for Speed, I've added some of these songs. Ah! Uh. Spit it on your on your rings. It depends. Um, I probably vibe to it. I wouldn't deliberately pick it unless it's like a song that I know and I vibed with before. And I very rarely go like 2000s rap and then listen to that because it's very hit and miss. It's a hit and miss genre. Some of the songs are good, some of them are shit. So, in my opinion, they're not shit. 
It's just they're not of my time when you think about it. I'm a little bit too young for them. God, even me saying that I'm a bit too young for like 2000s rap. <laughs> Eminem's alright. Like, I'll listen to some of the Eminem stuff. But... Yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a great fan of just 2000s rap. It's, it's sort of the same with rap, actually, just in general. Like, there'll be some rap songs that I've heard that I'll be like, yeah, I fucking go. And then there's some that I'm like, eh. Nah. This one's very weird, this song that we're listening to now. You'll see what I mean. It's strange, but it slaps. That's why I had to add it. Because it gets weird now. No, it gets weird in a bit. That's fair enough. This is the weird bit. It's like, what? Where's the song? It does this for ages. I know a song playing at a family party from 2003 or something and everyone asked me, wait, how old are you? <laughs> there are a couple of songs. Um, the uh, Country Road song. My grandparents are always like, how the fuck does he know that song? Because of the fact that I would sing it on a regular because it is, it is like a meme song. But they'd always be like, how? There's all sorts of, sorts of songs that... Country roads, take me home to the place I belong. It's really weird singing that and then we've got this like... Beat in the background. See what I mean though, this is a fucking tune. It is pretty weird, but it's a tune. Mountain Mama, take me home, country roads. Ah, you penis. Oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> Penneth. That's <laughs> 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 fucking terrible. Oh, uh, my name's Penneth. Oh, Lord Penneth. Never gonna give you up as well, that's a good one. And ca Gangster's Paradise, yeah. That. That's a fucking cracking song. Been spending most of our lives living in a gangster's paradise. Fucking love that song. Rest in peace. Fucking legend. Bum, 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 bum. 
Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> I don't even know the lyrics, but I know the chorus. And that's what. That's what I fucking love. We vibing. Spelled V I B I N. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some tunes, bro. Do some fucking tunes, lad. Put some fucking tunes on. Alright, not bad. Who will take that? Right, I'm just gonna run downstairs quickly. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out. <laughs>